The Great Crusade, produced by the radio and television apostolate in cooperation with the St. Louis Review, now presents Quiz a Catholic, a religious quiz program designed to lead men closer to God through a better understanding of things Catholic. Well, hello, friends. This is Lee Cavanaugh welcoming you once again to Quiz a Catholic and mighty happy to have you with us once again. Let's take a uh, moment out here to explain, in case you haven't seen our program before, just how we play Quiz a Catholic. We have five categories of subjects up here, objects, practices, events, personalities, and teachings. And we suggest and would really appreciate having you folks at home send us subjects in some of those categories and make them rough so we can give our panel some trouble. Now, speaking of the panel, they have three minutes in which to identify the subjects you send in. They can ask questions capable of a yes or no answer, and all they know is the category that the subject falls into. Well, we'll see uh, how that all works out in practice in just a moment. Right now, let's meet the members of our Quiz a Catholic panel for today. And first of all, we have uh, Mr. Tom O'Toole. We're happy to have you on Quiz a Catholic once again, Tom. Thank you, Lee. Tom, when he isn't busy with Quiz a Catholic or memorizing the encyclopedia, the Catholic encyclopedia... Britannica, you were right the first time. <laughs> Either way, he memorizes a lot of encyclopedias anyway. He's also in the real estate business in St. Louis, and we're happy to have you here, Tom, today. And right next to Tom O'Toole is Professor Vic Stout. He teaches English literature at St. Louis University. Uh, say something in uh, English literature for us, will you, this morning, Vic? Okay, Lee. I brought a little something along for your cold, Lee. <laughs> you think it'll help? No. Well, while, you, while you're looking for it, we'll just say how happy we are to have you with us and also <coughs> welcome the young lady who's sitting right next to you on the Quiz of Catholic panel today, Miss Helen Thurman, assistant to the vice president of Foster Brothers Manufacturing Company and... Uh, President of the Webster College Alumni Association. Helen, welcome to Quiz a Catholic. Thank you very much, Lee. I'm delighted to be here. We're glad to have you. Got all those Webster College gals looking in this morning? Oh, I imagine there are quite a few. Well, I'm sure you'll do right by the Alumni Association. Thank you. I hope so. And then we have Mr. Dick Meehan down there, and uh, he's the fourth member of our Quiz a Catholic panel today, member of the legal profession. I think he memorizes encyclopedias, too, on the side, don't you, Dick? Tons and tons of them. All right. Let's see how it works out here now. <laughs> But very, uh, at this particular moment, we want to say how happy and proud we are to have as our special guest on Quiz a Catholic today, Father Thomas J. Hederman, the pastor of St. Pius X Parish in Glasgow Village. Welcome, Father Hederman. It's quite a signal honor to be invited, Lee. Well, we're happy to have you. Shall we go right to work on the panel now with our first subject? Well, this one comes to us from Illinois, from Mrs. Henry uh, Ziprich of Michael, Illinois, and it's a practice. This is the practice of praying for priests. All right, for this practice, Tom O'Toole, may we start with you, sir? Okay, Lee, is this practice uh, performed by all Catholics? Oh, yes, uh-huh. Uh, can we tie it down to uh, when it might be performed? No, I don't think you could tie it down that way. Vic Stout? Is it essentially devotionally? Mm, yes. And would it be likely to uh, be practiced in congregation? It could happen that way sometimes. And uh, how did it, uh, <laughs> that was helpful. <laughs> yes. This practice, would it involve any physical action? Not necessarily. So we'll move along now to Helen Thurman. Can it also be practiced in the home? Yes, it could be, Helen. By uh, any member of the family? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, has it anything to do with prayer? Yes, it does. Very good question. Is it uh, a particular form of prayer? E a particular form? It couldn't quite tie it down as a particular form, so we have to say no, I'm afraid. Move along to Dick Mia. Is there a particular occasion in the home that prompts the saying of this prayer? No. Mm -mm. Is it something likely to occur at any time, an ejaculation, for instance? It could take that form. Open for general questioning, two minutes. There isn't a specific prayer, actually. Not a specific prayer. It's a blessing of some kind? No. Do, uh, does any member of the family perform this? They could. When there are several members of the family together, do they customarily perform it together? That could happen, too. Is it said at a particular time of the day? No, no particular time. Prayer petition type? Uh, yes, it would be. Mm -hmm. Is it something to do with the, the, the concept of the blessing of the homely? Is that No. Involved? Is it directed to a particular saint? No, not necessarily. Is, oh, is it a prayer concerned with the, the family, something to do with the family? No, not with the family. I mean, it could be said in the family, but... Now, as I understand, this isn't just said in the home, though. It can be, uh, this practice can be formed elsewhere. That's right. That's what's so sneaky about this. It's pretty hard to sneaky tie down. It. <laughs> Who's got a practice, thought? Practice. Is it a, a practice that is more or less an American practice? American Catholic practice? No, we couldn't no. tie it down that way, Father, could we? No. Have anything to do with the uh, uh, 
uh, use of uh, God's name. No. Like goodbye or... No. Like Is it that? something of custom, connected with custom? Well, it, it's, a, it's, it's done quite often. It's customarily done in that sense. One minute to go. When it's performed, does someone else have to be there besides the individual no. performing the practice? Mm -mm. Is there a sacramental involved with the practice? No, not necessarily. Practice. Any, any object at all, Lee? Nope, not, not needed. Not something like meditation? No, it's not that general. Is the form of expression? No, half a minute to go. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna give a statue away. We probably don't perform right this practice, that's all. Right? I'm sure you do. I practice this in the last uh, 24 hours? It's possible. I don't really know, Tom. <laughs> I haven't been with him the full time. Oh, Maybe do it with holy water? Nothing to do with holy water necessarily, no. Uh, almost no time object time. involved with this practice? Nope. Love to start like uh, that. Our time no, is up, brother. and we send Mrs. Henry Ziprich of Michael, Illinois, a statue of Our Lady of Television for beating the panel with the practice praying for priests. Right, Father? That's right. I've been curious all week why Lee was insisting that I'd be here today, and not next Sunday or the Sunday following. I, now I know why. I guess he realized that anyone looking at me would know that uh, it's necessary to pray for priests. <laughs> it takes <laughs> over. <laughs> but seriously, uh, is it necessary to pray for priests? In a recent book published in the United States called The Red Book of the Persecuted Church, there is documented country by country behind the Iron Curtain and in China the persecution of priests, killing of priests, imprisoning priests, putting them in concentration camps. The most famous example, of course, is Cardinal Menzenti. Certainly, these priests need our help. But does an ordinary, run-of-the-mind priest like myself in these free United States, does he need prayers? Absolutely. He needs prayers to carry out God's work. He needs prayers also to avoid sin and temptation. Take it from me. We need prayers. Well, fine, Father. Thank you very much. Let's move along now with subject number two. This is another rough one, see, and we'll see how they make out with this one. It was sent to us by Arthur A. Riefling of 5743 Highland Avenue in St. Louis. It's an object. This object is the bread in the quotation, not by bread alone shall man live, but by every word of God. All right, Helen Thurman, may we start with you on this object, please? Is this a specific object? Yes, it is. Would it be found primarily in church? No, we wouldn't be able to say that. Uh, Dick Meehan? Is this a manufactured object, Lee? Uh, no, not in, uh, no, not in the usual sense of the word. Tom? Does this object uh, not exist today? That's correct. It does not exist uh, today. Can we locate this object uh, both uh, chronologically and uh, geographically? Uh, yes. Uh, does, uh, does this, uh, is this object... Uh, <coughs> Mentioned in the Bible? Yes. Old Testament? No. Vic? Well, this object is mentioned in the New Testament. Is it concerned with the public life of Christ? Y yes. And is it uh, this concerned prior to his passion and death? Yes. And is this object concerned with either a parable or a miracle? Either a parable or a miracle. Uh, I would say no. No, it is not. Have I? Okay, we'll give you no on that rope for general questioning. Is this a <laughs> geographical... Uh, place we're looking for, or formation? No, that's not the object. Two minutes to go. You said, you said it wasn't manufactured, excuse me. Not manufactured in the usual sense of the word, no. I is it a real object, Lee? No, not exactly. Was it symbolic at the time it's yes. mentioned? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, does Christ refer to it? Does yes. It, does, uh, does it have something to do with, uh, with his own nature? With his own nature, I don't think we could describe it that way. We say no. Something to do with the powers of darkness, then? Uh, no, not the object we're looking for directly. Is this uh, is this okay. object, is it manufactured in a symbolic sense? You hesitate. Well, in other words, you had a real object, which was a counterpart of this. There would be some manufacturing involved, yes. Is, there isn't a, when this symbolic object was used, was Christ giving a sermon or giving a parable at the time? Something uh, that referred to? No, you wouldn't say he was giving a, ser a sermon, no. Is it connected with um, a miracle performed by Christ? No. Was it the baptism of Christ by, by St. John the Baptist? No. One could, minute ago. Can we locate this to a specific event? Yes, you could. Uh, in, in that event, uh, there was no miracle. Was it prior to uh, the uh, 
the presentation of uh, Christ in the Temple. No, it was not. Were, were there less than five people present at the time of this reference? Yes, less than five. Right. Would five. It be a, uh, were the apostles the people that were present? No. Less than five. Hmm. No. Half a minute to go. Did, did it uh, also involve an action that Christ performed? An action. Well, there was certain speaking. Well, there was some oral action. We'll say this object, uh, an animal, by chance. Big pardon? An animal? An animal involved? No. Have you do with the Sermon on the Mount? Not the Sermon on the Mount, no. This involved the transfiguration in any way? Nope. Yeah, our time is up. is up, and we got another rough doing? subject there, which means that Arthur A. Riefling of 5743 Highland Avenue in St. Louis gets a statue of Our Lady of Television for the object. The bread in the quotation, not by bread alone does man live. Right, Father? That's right. After our Lord had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, he was hungry. And immediately after he left the desert, the first one to appear to him was the devil. And because he was hungry, the devil tempted him. And he said, if you are the Son of God, change this stone into bread. And Christ said, not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is the important phrase, because Christ wished to teach us that we don't feed just the body, but we must feed also the soul. And we feed the soul by the word of God, his revelations, his teachings, his commandments. All right, Father. Well, let's see. We have a subject here now, and this is the one where we're going to let you folks at home kind of play along with the panel. Try it out with them if you can. We'll just give you the category. That the sub <laughs> sub you having some, you're being outwitted a little bit today. It wouldn't be so hard this morning. There's two subjects, two statues. That's not so bad. <laughs> no, let, let's see now. Uh, we'll just tell you the category the subject falls in at home, same as they know it, and see if you can figure it out in three minutes. It's one sent to us by... Uh, Mary Whitty of 6766 Roberts uh, in Pagedale, Missouri. It's an event, and uh, let's see, may we start with you, Vic Stout? You may. I'd like to venture a prediction. We'll do equally as well on this as we did on the others. That's Please. a good optimistic attitude to start <laughs> this off This a specific event? Yes. And uh, we can locate it, no doubt, chronologically. Yes. Prior to 1500. Yes. And uh, possibly in biblical times? Yes. And would it be in the Old Testament? No. In the New Testament. Helen, the New Testament is right. Would it um, be during uh, or prior to the uh, Passion of Christ? Yes, it would be. Uh, during Christ's public life? No. Nick? Did the event uh, lead that activity in the bullpen? Does that mean we're about to be uh, sent to the showers? <laughs> uh, did this event occur before Christ's birth? Yes. Uh, is it in some way connected with the coming birth of Christ? Yes. Uh, did it involve the Blessed Mother? Yes. Uh, would it be the visit of the Blessed Mother to Elizabeth? You got it. He really narrowed that one down, didn't he? It's the visitation. You're absolutely right, Dick. Well, Very certainly good. We got that one in a hurry. Made uh -huh. up for the past two misses. After uh, the Holy Ghost had conceived Mary, uh, Jesus in Mary's womb, the angel told her that her cousin Elizabeth in her old age had also conceived a son. And Mary's heart was filled with joy and happiness. And she rushed out from her home along a country road to a town close to Jerusalem and went in to visit and congratulate her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, as soon as she saw Mary, exclaimed, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. The joy and happiness that was in Mary's heart was the reason for the visit or the visitation. Now, we, too, when we hear of the good fortune of a friend or a neighbor or a relative, rather than our hearts be filled with envy and jealousy, let them also be filled with happiness. We, too, rush forth and congratulate them upon their good fortune. All right. Thank you, Father Hederman. I'd like to take a moment out here to suggest to you folks at home that you send us in some subjects for use on Quiz a Catholic, because we'd sure love to hear from you and make them rough, you know, so we give our panel some trouble like they've had a couple of times here this morning. We just want to look over here. These are the categories of subjects now. Objects, practices, events, personalities, and teachings. Sit down and figure out some good ones in one of those uh, categories. We'd especially like to hear from you on teachings and practices, because those are real rough, aren't they, panel? You bet. <laughs> Now, seriously, if you send us in the subject and it's used on the program and the panel does not identify it in three minutes, 
Then you receive one of these beautiful statues of Our Lady of Television, the patroness of the Catholic radio and television apostolate. So all you have to do is uh, jot it down, a postcard or letter, send it to Quiz a Catholic in care of the station you're watching right now. I'd like to say something, too. A number of folks have told us or have written in that, golly, we sent some subjects quite a while back and they haven't been used. Well, now, it may possibly happen uh, during the many weeks that Quiz a Catholic has been on the air that a subject you send in now was used before, and we try not to repeat them. It may be that we have your subject on hand and are planning to use it sometime later on. We try to pick them out so they're of the greatest interest to the greatest number of viewers. So, by all means, even though you've sent them in before, send us in some more subjects, won't you? Quiz a Catholic, care of the station. Let's go to work on the panel right now with one sent to us by... Uh, Mary Ann uh, Mushill of 809 North 19th Street in East St. Louis, Illinois, and this is a teaching. This teaching is the obligation to avoid rash judgment. All right, for this teaching, how about starting with you, Dick Meehan, may we? Uh, Lee, does the teaching involve a, a belief as distinguished from a, a practice? A belief as distinguished from a practice, we'd have to say no, wouldn't we, Father? Sorry, Dick. That's okay. Tom O'Toole? Uh, does this uh, teaching uh, involve an obligation on my part? Yes, it does. And is it a positive uh, requirement that I have to perform something rather than not do something? No, in the sense that you said it. How did I say that I again? I got it. Does this uh, teaching have any biblical basis? Yes, it does. And uh, would that biblical basis be... Um, Ten Commandments, perhaps? Yes. And this Partially teaching, that, anyway. Yes, and it involves an item of conduct. I should conduct myself in some particular fashion. Yes. And uh, that uh, portion of the Ten Commandments to which it refers, would that be in the second half? The second half, yes. It would. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the second half? I don't know. The, uh, <laughs> the um, teaching, does it have anything to do with the nature of truth or the necessity to... Uh, Adhere to it? Yes, it has something to do with that. Two uh, minutes to go. Yes. Now, does it have anything to do with the usual notions of calumny or slander or anything of that area where I disturb my neighbor by my opinions? Or mm, yes, it sure does. Having to do with the... Uh, well, does it... I pass. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, does it have anything to do with bearing false witnesses against our neighbor? Well, it is based on, on that, yes. yes. Um but it isn't directly connected with it. That's not the specific teaching we're looking for. Uh -huh. um, is it uh, something that um, pertains, that, uh, something that we should uh, know at all times? Yes, something? I think it's something we should all be conscious of, yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, open for general questions. Does it have anything to do with, the, with the correcting the damage done through slander? No. Retracting her. Uh-uh. Is it, a, is it a specific vice like slander? It's, well, there's a specific vice involved here, yes. Uh, and has it more to do with uh, uh, not so much slander as simply just uh, not, not, uh, not telling the truth when under an obligation to do so? No. It's a teaching not to do so. How's our time? One minute? Is it uh, damaging another's reputation in some way? In some way, yes, it could. Uh huh. I do it envy. With envy, not and specific. With gossip, not specifically. Again, this no. is by its nature a moral precept. Then is that right, Lee? Yes. Half a minute. Mm -hmm. it, 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 does it bear e equally upon all persons? I mean, regardless yes. of age. And, and mm -hmm. uh, who's got an idea? <laughs> does it usually involve only 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 uh, the physical action of, of talking or writing? Uh, gee, uh, I'd say talking usually. Yes, it could involve that. Sure. Is, is it, it slander? No, not slander specifically. No. Lying of uh, Our, everyone's entitled to the truth. Our time is up, and you are so close to it. It's uh, Here's what uh, Miss Mary Ann Mushill of 809 North 19th Street in East St. Louis, Illinois, gets a statue of Our Lady of Television for the teaching, the obligation to avoid rash judgment. Another three minutes and we would have had that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rash judgment is uh, judging the action of another falsely or unjustly. Uh, take Lee Cavanaugh here, for instance. You Suppose uh, <laughs> My he made a date uh, with his wife to meet her a half hour after this television program downstairs. And uh, 12 o'clock comes, 12.15, 12.30, Lee starts to fret, fume. He's raging. 
Why couldn't my wife be on time? She's probably talking on the phone to one of her friends. She's probably talking over the back fence to one of her neighbors. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and Lee picks it up and he hears his wife's voice saying, Honey, uh, uh, I've just been frantic with worry. I've been trying to get a doctor. Our youngster's been very, very sick. It's the first opportunity I had to, to call you. That's rash judgment. So uh, each and every one of us, I think from time to time, uh, are liable to fall into this habit of rash judgment. We should uh, be very careful about jumping at conclusions. And uh, certainly the person whose heart is filled with charity, who follows the precept of Christ, judge not and you shall not be judged, is not liable to fall into rash judgment. Lee, I'm sorry to use you as an example. It's really an example. I don't think that you're guilty of rash judgment, but Maybe I'll I take that I, back. Maybe I'll take that back. I better talk to your wife. I first. wouldn't dare, Father. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Uh, let's move along here now with another subject, which I think will give our panel some trouble, and them there is the kind of subjects I like. Uh, this was sent to us by Mrs. Emma Dye of 3629A uh, Marceline Terrace in St. Louis. It's a personality. This personality is all those listed in the genealogy of Christ. All right. For this personality, let's start with Tom O'Toole. This one person, uh, Lee? No. Vic? This is a, a class of people? A class of people? No. Helen? A group of persons? A group of persons, yes. Uh, would it be a religious group? A religious group in what mm -hmm. sense? That they have uh, an order of priests? Or no, nuns. no, they would not be that type of group. Vic? Are, are these people deceased? Yes. Are they biblical then? Yes. Are they uh, New Testament? Partially. Partially? Uh-huh. You mean some of these people were from the Old Testament uh, recording and some from the New? Yes, sir. Are they, uh, uh, do they have one thing in common, some experience they had in their life? Uh, one thing in common. Yeah, there's something in common something about them. That puts them in the group. I mean, one event or something in each life? Not an event, no. <coughs> Does the group have a name? A name, no. Are these, uh, are all these people Jewish people? Uh, just about. Uh, there may have been some exceptions, but... Uh, we Were they associated with some act of revelation? No. Two minutes to go. Um, were they followers of Christ? No. Some are they of them might have been, or were, undoubtedly, yes. But are they associated with some miracle, then? No. Um, are they all men? No. The men and women, then? Yes. Do, um, they go, do they go way back in Bible history? Yeah, pretty far back. Are they people who had uh, had some reference in the Bible? That's how we'd know them. Some uh, reference uh, to each one of them. Mm, yes, is that right, Father? Something to do with a uh, with an, a sacrifice, some uh, story of sacrifice. No, not the chosen people. No, partially. Do we know the names of some of these people? Yes, you would. <coughs> some of them. Do we know prophets? the names of all of them? Well, what was that, Vic? Prophets, grants, prophets. Uh, were there prophets uh, involved? There would be prophets. Yes, involved. be some involved. Were yeah. all these people leaders, uh, Lee? No, not necessarily. Are they identified by one particular name? One particular name? No. One minute to go. Are they all people that at one time uh, offended God and, and were restored to his, uh, uh, to his justice? Uh, we wouldn't know that in any, any sense. No. Mm -mm. That's not what we're looking for. Did, did the people that existed in the uh, New Testament, did they go beyond uh, the crucifixion? Mm, well, some of them may have lived beyond. Isn't that right, yeah. Father? They did, as a matter of fact, yes. Beyond. They governmental. Uh, Some of them may have been. We couldn't tie it down that way. Yeah. Half uh, a minute to go. A group like the. Uh, no. You'll uh, be sorry. We're already sorry. Uh, well, <laughs> people are making all those ball rash ball. judgments at the moment. Yes. Uh, How about a thought here now? Uh, we haven't gotten one. Have of anything to do with miracles? No. To. Uh, How's that tie? People have followed Moses. Nope. Maybe. People saw the promised land. Nope. About five seconds. Not enough. I <laughs> okay, our time is up, and here goes the statue to Mrs. Emma Dye of 3629A Marceline Terrace for the personality subject, those listed in the genealogy of Christ. Well, yeah. I felt sure that Tom O'Toole would guess that one. So did I, Father. Uh, we were depending upon all the Irish. <laughs> All the Irish are apparently interested in genealogy, like the O'Toole's and the Cavanaugh's, the Brennan's, even the Hedermans. How about the Mayans? Because uh, <laughs> they all claim that they're descended from the kings of Ireland. But seriously, a genealogy is the history of the descent of an individual from an ancestor. 
And uh, one of the genealogies listed in the New Testament of St. Matthew uh, was written primarily for the Jews to prove that Jesus Christ was the promised Messiah. It starts with Abraham and comes right down through the various ancestors, right to David, to Solomon, to prove a prophecy that Jesus Christ was descended from the kingly line of David, as all the Jews expected the Redeemer to come from uh, the kingly line of David. We too should be interested in our ancestors, at least whisper a prayer for them from time to time. All right, Father. We can't give our panel full time on this next one, I don't think, but let's see what they can do with this one sent in by Miss Marge Andler of 1024 uh, Crete Drive in St. Louis County, and this is a practice. This is the practice of receiving Holy Communion daily. Don't have too much time, so let's move right along here now with this uh, practice. How about you, Dignian? Uh, this practice performed in congregation usually, Lee? At times. Uh, is it performed by uh, clergy and laity? Yes. Is it devotional in its nature? Yes. Are there prayers usually said? Usually, yes. Usually Invariable. performed in church? Usually in church, yes. Uh, is it performed when some other uh, event is taking place, such as a mass, something like that? Yes, usually. Um, does it does it involve, uh, is it necessary in the mass, this particular practice? Uh, this practice is not, no, not essential for the mass. Does this have to do with right the sacraments, sacrament? right? With the sacrament, yes. Oh, Eucharist? Yes. Uh, practice, uh, practice is uh, receiving Holy Communion. Yes, that's it. That's involved? Uh-huh. Uh, preparation for Holy Communion? No. Did this practice occur before Holy Communion rather than after? You couldn't tie it down that way. Examination accounts? Oh, this is not open yet. No. Uh, would it be the uh, a Holy Communion on First Friday? It would partially include that. Mm -hmm. Well, will it be... Uh, oh, excuse me. Okay. Two minutes to go. Go right ahead, Helen. Um, would it be uh, anything to do with the... Uh, Changing of the law, uh, the laws of um, fast and absence. And no, that would not be involved here. Have to give you a no on that. Move along to Dick. Would it uh, have something to do with the uh, the different occasions in which we we receive communion? With different occasions, well, in a sense, yes, yes. that'd be involved. W would it be something like the first Fridays and the first Saturdays, a practice of receiving communion on certain days? Would include that partially. Is it the practice of frequent reception of Holy Communion other than at Sunday Mass? Uh, yes, that is involved. We're going to have to give about 10 seconds more. How daily about communion? Daily communion, the very practice good. of receiving Holy Communion daily. Right, Father? That's it, exactly. See, I think they're just about to call time on us here, Father. Wish we had a little more time and a few more subjects here. But uh, I do want to say to you, Father Thomas Hederman of St. Pius X Parish out there in Glasgow Village, how much we enjoyed having you with us today. Hope you'll come back and see us again sometime. I'd love to, Lee. After participating, I can understand why your program is so popular. Well, we've had a lot of fun with it and hope you have it too. And let's just take a brief moment here to say to the members of our panel, to Tom O'Toole, hey, Lee. to Vic Stout. We've had more fun than we had today. <laughs> <laughs> to our special <laughs> guest, Miss Helen Thurman. And to Dick Meehan, thanks for being with us today on Quiz a Catholic. Thanks to you folks who have sent us in subjects. And uh, all you have to do is send in a Quiz a Catholic in care of the station you're watching right now. We'd love to hear from you, so send them in, won't you? Now, this is Lee Kavanaugh thanking you for joining us today on Quiz a Catholic. Quiz a Catholic has been produced by the Radio the Catholic Radio and Television Apostolate of St. Louis. The Great Crusade is brought to you through the cooperation of the St. Louis Review and station KWK TV. Production staff of the Great Crusade includes Father Francis J. Matthews, Catherine Walsh, and Jim Hennessy. Join us next week when the Great Crusade will again present Quiz a Catholic.